Today's show is brought to you by homebrewsupply.com. Homebrew Supply is your one-stop shop for brew day ingredients, recipes, equipment, and more. Take advantage of everyday low pricing and everyday flat rate shipping only at homebrewsupply.com. Go to homebrewsupply.com right now and use our promo code HHH to get 5% off your order. Homebrewsupply.com. Let us help make your brew day better. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stubing. Today, I am joined by the director of operations at cmbecker.com, Mr. James Carlson over there, and only oh, James audience. Carlson. It's uh, it's just you and me, my friend. We are missing the boss man. He's gone. He abandoned us. Uh, no, he's on his way home. I, my understanding is he's in the air right now, flying yep. to DFW. And then what is it from y'all to DFW? Two, two and a half hours? Two and, about a two and a half hour drive. Well, to his house, probably more like three. Yeah. Uh, see, that's what that's what was always funny flying. Because like, usually when we fly out together, it, it, um, I either fly out of Bergstrom and get to where we're all going and meeting or frequently I'll come drive up there and then we all fly out together from DFW. We, the trip there, we, you have all that kind of excitement of the trip happening. And so you're like, oh, this is great. No, no problem at all. I love this. And the drive there, we're laughing and joking and blah, blah, blah. When we land, like let's say from a Germany trip or from a homebrew con and we're exhausted and you get yeah. to the car and the DFW parking lot and you go, oh, my God, we have two and a half more hours of, of travel. <laughs> like we were just in the air for five hours or whatever. And, and now we got yeah. Yeah, you know, like, it, it puts it in perspective because I live 30 minutes away from from Austin Bergstrom with, you know, with some traffic, give or take 30 minutes. Um, it's a huge difference, dude. When when it's like two and a yeah, half. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Next time we do fly, I don't know when that'll ever be, but I would definitely tell Todd. We'll just, I'll just fly out of Austin. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. Well, that's, that's what, he had been. He did that. It depends where, because Todd is a man of frugality, like myself. We're cheap, and if you know, American Airlines is our airline of choice because I think Todd has the status built up there. The rates at a DFW because that's a hub city for them. Yeah. I, I get why, but when I fly to Bergstrom, it's oftentimes more expensive for him to put me on American because I fly out of Bergstrom. They put me in the DFW anyway, and then we go to our destination. Where yeah. I, like the last couple trips Southwest, he's been able to book me cheaper if I just go straight out of Austin. So the only bummer for for me, maybe not for y'all, when we're leaving our trips, is I don't get to hang out with y'all at the gates because I like when we're leaving uh, Rhode Island, it's like, oh, my gates way over there, and y'all's is way over here. <laughs> Todd seems okay with that though. It's funny. Well, he he's <laughs> oh, you know him. He's he's buried, he's got his head buried in his laptop the whole time. So. Oh my god. Gosh, I can't even imagine. Like you know, he's been he sent us incredible photos from from Portland and mm, and then Seattle. Gorgeous. And you know, by the yeah. way, real quick, he told me that the, all that stuff going down in Portland right now. The day before mm-hmm. they were down there, and he's like, "Yeah, I went down there during the day to check it out." Because you know how Todd is. And it was like, <laughs> and, and sorry, that was the wrong Todd impersonation. Was, oh, I went down there to check it out. <laughs> And uh, he said the day. I want to be- stay far away from that place. <laughs> he said the day before, yeah, there were some guys that were spray painting. It was no big deal. And then I see on the news the next day, there's like protests. They're bought, you know, <laughs> it's like that. In that, that is quintessential Todd. Because do you remember yeah. when we went to HomebrewCon Baltimore, or was it uh, CBC? Was in Baltimore? No, it was HomebrewCon. Uh, CBC yeah. was in Washington D.C. that year, and mm-hmm. uh, in Baltimore. Remember, we it was very late. We'd been drinking, and we're walking down, and Todd's like, let's just go down this corner. Let's go down this alley. And it's like, Todd, <laughs> yeah. like, we took some corners where, and turns where I was like, Todd, maybe, maybe we should turn around. You know, this, it, it looks a little unruly going down here. There's some, there's some people talking to themselves in this alley and calling us names and telling us they want our money. He's just like, dur, 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 dur. oh, no, I Well, <laughs> if you remember, when we were in Portland, there was a guy screaming at the sky. Yes. Oh, we I- walked off. 
I re- Portland, what I do remember, beautiful city. There was at least a dozen times where we were walking, because that's what we do when we go to cities. We walk everywhere. Yep. And in Portland, there was at least a dozen times I thought we were going to have to defend ourselves because of how aggressive. It, it, Austin's getting the same way, man. I can't take that's my kids. That's what I've heard. I, I can't take my kids. Shame, I can't take my kids downtown because of the aggressiveness. Because uh, And there's really nothing downtown for them now but uh i have fond memories of high school age going down and going to shows on a friday or thursday night friday night saturday night and you know and and homelessness in austin was always a thing but it was like yeah i have some change from the show here you go or i have snacks or whatever now like i if i had a nickel for every time someone not it called me a vulgarity right and obscenity and don't get me wrong the way i dress i deserve it right they like call me names i, I get <laughs> I it <laughs> but 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 they're but the, you know what i mean they're very aggressive and, and to the point where i'm like I don't even want to take my wife down here because I'm not looking to get in a fight. Like the more I've trained combat sports for the last decade, basically, the less amount I want to get in a fight. It's terrible. You ever been punched in the nose? It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. No, yeah. and, 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 and not only that, like if I get knocked out in the street and I hit my head on the curb, that's good night, Sally, forever. Or what if I knocked someone out? It, it'd be out of even out of self defense. I couldn't live with myself if I killed some dude. That's terrible. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's Todd, just, it's one of those th- nowadays in this environment, it's just better not to do. Exactly. I, yeah, I'm not looking to get in a fight. I'm an adult. I'm an adult and I have a job sort of. Um, but Todd, it was just so funny to me because he Todd, that is so Todd to be like, I'm going to go check out who it is down there. <laughs> I was expecting to see him in some of those news clips when like, you know, all these, kid- around yeah, like yeah. <laughs> all these kids are storming the federal trade building or whatever federal building that is. And Todd just in the foreground getting interviewed by the news like, oh, pretty exciting stuff here in Portland. <laughs> I can't wait to go, you know, go tell all my friends about it when I go back to Austin. <laughs> so, yes. Todd is out of town still. He's coming back. We're going to record. We're doing uh, episodes of Recipe Recap tomorrow with you. Um, and I believe uh, one of them is the cream ale. With, uh, that's for you. And I believe either Zach or Joe's coming. I, don't, I haven't gotten a confirmation. Yeah, the, I think Todd has both. Okay. The one that Zach and Joe did, little, it's, it's not the recipe. Okay. It's similar, but it's a little popped a little. What I did was exactly what Lorena told us to do. Exactly. So I, I know we're doing a cream ale episode. I think we're finally, I've been putting off the coal sh- uh, episode for a long time. And I, I had. Oh, man, it's all good. N- 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 Everybody's oh. made up a less than stellar batch of beer. I, I tapped some more because go figure, we still have a bunch left in the keg at my pop's mm-hmm. house. It's so bad. I was hoping, I was like, <laughs> was oh. Is it getting better no. or is it getting worse? Oh, it's getting worse. Oh, I poured it, James. So maybe it's got a little dicey. It definitely got some dicey. I think so. I, I should have brought, you know what? Maybe before I leave, I'll bring a growler so you can tell, we can tell the difference between where it's at now compared to the mm-hmm. bottle and compared to what it's supposed to taste like because I have fruit up there. And yeah. um, it, it, dude, it is so heartbreaking that this is like, this is <laughs> hey, the... I'm the one that did the Maybach. <laughs> no, no, well, yeah, and but, then had yeah, the but you know, fermentation, but we you... ended up, I did a second pitch and I had bumped it up to room temp and did a third pitch of yeast. So it's got some, it's an estuary Maybach. Which oh, this is a, totally ma- this is an standard. estuary clovey banana Kolsch. It's so heartbreaking, yeah. and especially because it's a Kolsch. Like if I would have messed up. Um, you know, an IPA, that session IPA or something, I'd be like, yeah, okay, who cares? I'm not going to lose any sleep. I, I drank a third of my only nine ounce pour and I put, yeah. and I dumped it. It was that bad. That's the, might be the first Been time I've dumped a Kolsch. Uh, and I told my dad, I dumped the keg and we haven't yet because, you know, I, if I smoke, it's a, hard to dump a beer. It's so it really hard is. to dump a beer. And I figure, you know, when I'm three or four beers in and I'm with the cigar, that's when I'll pour the Kolsch. <laughs> That's when I'll pour that Kolsch and get through. Okay, ooh, burn burn the the feelings off my tongue. Now I can have that Kolsch. And it's you know it's like what people do when they have ice cold Budweiser or whatever. It's like ice cold, so I can't taste it. But uh, <laughs> well, I've been guilty of that too. Well, sometimes you just want a bland beer. Yeah. Oh, and you know. I've yeah. I've gone down to the store and bought uh, Lone Star or uh, PBR is kind of hard to find nowadays. You Dude, know, just whatever's. Hell, I'll tell you what, my pop in his fridge, he had a Corona Premier. I never mm-hmm. had Corona Premier. It was as plain Jane, nothing to do. And after going from that Kolsch Weizen, I was like, oh my God, I like this more than the Kolsch I brewed. Shoot me, <laughs> shoot me in the face. But yes, um, 
Also, real quick, yes, Todd's out of town. We do, you and I, not planned at all, have a beach trip next week. That's why we got to get some of this content filmed before I leave. We're going to do an episode tomorrow with the three of us that I'll publish next week while we're out of town because I don't want to do an episode on vacation. Um, no, no. They're telling. Here's how 2020 has been going for us so far. All this coronavirus stuff is, is heartbreaking. All this uh, pandemic. All these businesses being shut down. Uh, people. I people. When I say people, I'm talking about me gaining weight. Uh, all the like. There's mental health crisis. And then I try to keep that perspective because right now they're telling me we're going to Puerto Ranzas, the Gulf of Mexico. A yeah, hurricane is forming, or a tropical storm <laughs> is forming. It came out of nowhere, James. We we announced our vacation, and then God said, "Tropical storm." Thanks. Uh, that's yeah. I blame myself because I'm. I don't know if you know this about me. I'm bad at things like betting, um, sports betting specifically, or five dollar bets with Todd, really specifically. Oh, me too. So as soon as I announce, like I'm gonna have a great time at the beach, boom, the weather report gets bad. I need to. Either stop publicly announcing the way I feel about things so I don't curse those things or right. um, try to be more spontaneous with my life choices. Because, I mean, you saw the weather report. Isn't that, isn't that oh, yeah. stupid? Oh, yeah. I've been watching it for the last a week or so. Yeah, it's my luck. Typical Carlson luck. <laughs> Typical Carlson with, the t- with our luck combined. <laughs> it was yeah, exactly. Tight. But I do have my little half tent. It looks like a dome. And I usually camp out under it to out of the sun i don't care i'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up if it's raining i'm gonna be underneath there with cold beer and exactly and that's what and i told my wife it. i told my wife as long as there's no thunder and lightning we are gonna make this trip enjoyable and our beach house which you have to come by at least one of the times our beach house them. has a pool so if it's thundering and lightning obviously i'm not gonna let the kids in the pool but right. if it's just if it's bad enough rain where the kids don't want to go to the beach it's like okay we can go. The, the beach house has a game room, has one of those basketball shooting arcade games, has a shuffleboard and foosball. We'll make something out of this trip because, darn it, I'm not. Oh, you're still getting away. You're I mean, still it's, getting it's not away. Gonna be that, it's not going to be solid rain. No. Well, let me. Let Wait, me I was just saying. Whoa, 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 whoa. That. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come back to this next week <laughs> when I say, Hey, James, remember that time when you said it can't be yeah. solid rain the whole time? I shut my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, we're we're going to the beach. Uh, reminder to everyone that there is a keg and recipe sale going on right now at kegconnection.com that I believe is ending this weekend. And then for our Patreon members, you still have time to join our thirty-five dollar tier or our fifty dollar tier and get your choice of this month's recipe kit options, which is between the fat tire clone and the lemon drop pilsner todd or no no it was you who who messaged mm-hmm. about the lip give us an update on the lemon drop that you brewed you know that thing started out i i we were having we had i brought my grinder in because we have a three row slotted grinder and then i have just a two row serrated grinder and adjusted the the rollers a little tighter together because we've had some efficiency issues Wow, that a huge difference. So my efficiency went from what we were expecting at 1048 all the way up to 10.56. Now, another thing is I was able to get some really fresh uh, imperial yeast. I used the harvest on all the way down to 10. No Lager. way. Dude. And I lagered that at 50 degrees. So it's done. I, I've already done the diacetyl. It's cold crashed. I cold crashed it. I dry hopped it. Oh, I, did, I did the diacetyl and then he did the dry hop. You always want to dry hop at room temp. Oh, you can't get as much out of the hops. I do that personally. So anyway, got all that out of the way and it's conditioning right now and it's about 40 on gas. It's real dry. It's a lot drier than what we brought to Homebrew Con. I think the ones at Homebrew Con, we were at, uh, I think it ended up at like 1013 or 1015. But this one, I went down to 10. I'm excited about trying it. And also, House, or probably not House, Harvest is what I believe shipped out with the recipe kits. I'm like, mm-hmm. it is 99% yep. sure. And which is a good reminder for me to tell y'all, uh, today is Wednesday, the 22nd, when we're recording this. Uh, it, I, my understanding, Joe told me they're going out today for, the, for July's recipe kits, ones that haven't, if you haven't gotten them already, they're going out today. If you don't get your tracking number, email me or message me through either Patreon, Instagram, or Facebook message, or, you know, uh, Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com, whatever you want to, however you want to contact me so I can get you a tracking number. Cause I know some people, uh, the people who like, we have a lot of Texas, uh, Patreons, our Patreon members. 
and they get theirs like the next day, right? Because because FedEx yeah. does that for ninety nine percent of in state. They they did it out quick. I'm very impressed. So yeah, but one to two days. Most some most places in Texas we also have a lot of them. yeah uh, totally, and we also have a lot of California ones though, which is like three to four days. And if they mm-hmm. don't have the tracking, I understand completely with the heat and all that. That it's like yeah. they, you don't want it sitting on your porch any longer than it has to. So if you don't get your tracking number by the end of t- uh, well, they're they're listening to this on Thursday. If you haven't gotten your tracking number by now, tell me so I can get it to you quick, please, so that you have an idea or you know for sure where the package is. Uh, the, the status of it. But you can go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, get all the information there. And uh, we will be announcing on next week's episode the uh, August recipe kits, which I'm just excited that one, these recipes are, it gives us an excuse to brew them. And mm-hmm. we're we're able to have more diversity in our kegerators lately, like uh, like more selection. Because now that Todd has a sit tap, he's all about like, hey James, brew something. Hey Joe, brew yeah. something. <laughs> like it's it's a beautiful thing to have beer and be able to try them. Because like the lemon drop pilsner is not one that I would like. I'm a I'm a man who knows what he likes. Like oh I'm get oh Josh and his cold. But it's true because I like it. But every now and then like that lemon drop pilsner ends up in rotations like. I really appreciate that I'm having this right now. I wouldn't brew it all year, every time, and, and crush it every day or every weekend. Every day, I sound like an alcoholic. Uh, every weekend, like, whatever. But, like, oh, my gosh. That session IPA that was last month or two months ago, mm-hmm. maybe, I loved having it on rotation. So it's really cool getting all this. And I love the fact that our Patreon is growing. Like, we're That's great. We're, we're shipping yeah. out every month because we have bi-monthly and monthly. And every month, there's like 50 recipes going out right now, dude. It's nuts. That's awesome. It's yeah. nuts. I love it. Thank you so much to those who are part of our yeah, Patreon absolutely. at all levels. We, you have no idea how much we appreciate you guys. And we are always looking to better the content we put out, which is why I'm going to segue us to the questions because nobody likes my small talk. I read y'all's iTunes reviews. <laughs> I understand where we're at. So, James, I've got three questions for us, my friend, starting with our first one who came from our friend Billy D, who used the submission format, homebrewhappyhour.com. Billy wrote, Joshua, the podcast is my favorite part of my Friday commute, and I appreciate that you have experts on to answer the questions you cannot. I think that's a dig at me because I don't ever answer the questions. <laughs> <laughs> For my question, I would like to know how much of a keg batch of beer is affected by temperature changes. Example, we recently had a power outage for over four hours. My beer is in a, he wrote two fifths, but I think he meant two and a half. My beer is in a two and a half gallon keg and the temperature in the fridge is usually around 40. I'm not sure how hot it ended up getting in the fridge by the time power came back, but it was noticeably warmer. This just happened, so the keg is still in my fridge as it cools itself back down. Can I expect some off flavors now, or do you think it'll be okay? Uh, I'm going to start off by saying I took this question, one, because he just submitted it, and what a coincidence, I lost power last week. I want to tell, I want to update people. It was me and Joe. I don't know if you watched that episode. Uh, in the middle of it, or the light started flickering. And I mm-hmm. thought I, I erroneously blamed Philips Corporation for their light bulbs potentially d- giving me problems. I want to apologize to the Philips Corporation for implying that your products were less than stellar. It actually was uh, a brownout, I think they call it, like uh, like too much usage, I guess. Yeah, there's too much demand on the too on much the demand on the substation. They had to yeah, rotate out. <laughs> exactly. So um, I thought, man, did I not pay my bill? But it turns out I did. So first. Sorry, Phillips. Um, sorry, Perdinalis Electric Corporation for implying that you're bad, too, just because I might not have paid my bill. But I did pay my bill. And then uh, three, yeah, power outage happens in the summer. Brownouts like that, demand happens. How uh, prepared or um, what can a person expect? Like he said, if it's over four hours, let's just round down and say it was four hours. How long yeah. can a keg be warm for, James, outside of once it's already cool? Well, I'm, I would say as long as the keg is sanitized and clean and there's no bugs in the beer. You know, because sometimes they can hide and they pop up when it when it's warmed up. We experienced that last year. But uh, that all being said, it should be a big deal. It'll taste different warm, but when you cool it down, fine. I've had, I had, I remember I had a switch go out on my compressor on my kegerator, and it it completely. It always happens when I'm out of town. That came back and everything. I lost a bunch of DME and telling me. I had it in the freezer next to stripped the breaker, turned them both off. Long story short, fixed it, pulled them back down, and you couldn't taste a difference. But if you have like diacetyl is present, it's kind of 
it'll come along and grow as it matures in the keg. But if it instantly goes warm, we shipped ours to to uh, Homebrewcon one year. They sat in a hot warehouse all, all for like two or three days. By the time Josh and I made it there to pick it up, everything was fine. But we had one keg of the lemon drop pilsner, oddly enough, that uh, it had a little bit of infection. It worked. I know. So, it was terrible too. It, it was, was so terrible. heart it was so heart out. it was so heartbreaking and and I think I've brought it up way too much. I'm sorry James to keep bringing it up for you. <laughs> yeah, it was it, bad. It's so heartbreaking when you have to pour beer. Um I so, I'd like to ask you uh, I'm a sucker for putting my electronics at least. Every like the reason why Joe and I could keep doing the show is cuz in the other room uh the master closet is where I keep all my like hub for home server and my modem and router and it's on a universal power supply or a, a backup a battery backup right and same with all my board and all this stuff here can you put like a the kind of edge star dan b that size mini fridge or dorm mm-hmm. fridge or whatever you call it would you say like hey, putting it on a power supply would that work or are those not really meant for appliances no they they consume way too much power and they're ac so Thing about electronics is electronics end up dc by, by the time they hit the power supply so that's why they're able to and it takes very low current to keep keep everything the memory up and everything running but with a, a, a bridge a ac compressor it's one of the the reason why people have high electric bills when they turn their ac down is those compressors suck a lot even if they're little in a fridge put a battery back up you would almost have, to have solar cells in a bank like one of those and Tesla just, actual, like the new Tesla yeah. wall mount thing, where like, right. all for my um, all for my fridge because I don't want my beer going bad, man. <laughs> I don't. I, I honestly, I've had that happen more than once. I had an issue, and think about it this way: they're producing the beer, of the big guys, and uh, that all gets lagered at cold temps. They package it cold. It warms up because of distribution sets in the floor of a store. You take it home, cool it down, and you drink it, and they're you know, if that was a big issue, that wouldn't happen. the The main thing, though, is if you've got uh, got any kind of trace of bacteria or bugs in the beer, you're gonna know. <laughs> you're about to find you'll out, know. right? Yeah. yeah. I, I know. What, where's I? Where my mind started changing on, uh, or my thought process really. Uh, every time we clean out the lines for at Todd's, Todd doesn't like normal people wait for their keg to be empty. And then they clean out their lines or whatever. Todd is literally like on it every two week, sometimes three week where, yeah, he still has beer. So he cleans out his lines. Uh, we He'll put the beer. He has no problem just leaving it out for however long it takes us to finish doing the whole kegerator and then puts it right back in like no problem. And I remember the first time seeing it and he, he looked at me like I asked the dumbest question in the world, which I've seen that look from him a bunch. And he was like, <laughs> I get it too. I know. And, and he was like, why would the beer be bad? And I had to sit and go. Why would it be bad? It was only out for like two hours. Yeah, why would it be? I just had this thing of like, put it in the fridge. Oh, it's already been cold. Ah, you know, <laughs> like, like freaking out. But it's not, um, you know, it's not that drastic. It's not that serious. But is there, like you said, if he left it out and it warmed up to a, a temperature that was acceptable for that bacteria to either reinvigorate or come back to life or present itself, that's what he's going to expect, right? I mean, that's what he'll right. know when he pours and he, t- oh, it's buttery. Oh, God. Like, no, it um, won't do that. The thing about it is it won't do it overnight. It, it'll have still take, takes time for that bacteria to grow, turn into a foliage, but or eat a bad off flavor. All things being equal, I'm not going to know the difference. Yeah, and which is which is a good reassuring thing because I, I fear, especially in Central Texas right now, that this uh, you know I'm in I'm in a suburb of Austin that has thousands of of homes being built every week. It feels like in all these neighborhoods. So I imagine the demand uh, uh, in a hot hot summer m- may have more of an impact the more my community grows. And you know, Absolutely. over time, over time, like it seems like neighborhoods come first, infrastructure adapts. 30 years later. <laughs> like, and so like PE, like my, yeah, I know, like, I know like my, our roads are still meant for when our town had only 10,000 people in it, not, you know, 45,000 or whatever we're at now. Little, still a little town comparatively speaking, 
but uh, I bet you, you know, the, the electric company it costs a lot of money to to uh, adapt their equipment to the demand. So they're like, yeah, let's see how long they get by with uh, these outages that happen like once a week. It, that'll be fine. Yeah, we'll oh, up- yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, during this time of year, I'm on a co-op. So it's usually every day I go in in the house and the clocks are crashing on the stove and my power's went out. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, that, isn't that depressing it, when you go home it, and you're like, oh, lost power. Good Lord. Crap, I got to reprogram the clocks again. But, you know, really, if you don't open the door, the kegerator, they'll stay cold for a fairly good long That was what I was going to wrap up the question and ask you, because, like, we, my conventional limited anecdotal knowledge has always been, like, when we lose power, hey, leave the fridge and the freezer closed. Like, our, not, our, not our, the one that... I have in my office now for my kombucha and stuff, but like the main one that has our milk and eggs and all that. And, and, and it's always, I've never had an issue. We've had power outs as long as like five or six hours. And then mm-hmm. some of the food warmed up a little, but not spoiled. Right. And so right. I assume yeah. that a keg grater would be just as insulated because it's a fridge or, and, or, sure. or a keezer uh, that you convert <laughs> would be just as insulated because that's what it was built to do was to hold temp. It, it's not leaked. Like, you know how expensive your electric bill would be if your fridge wasn't efficient and it was leaking out, you know, because yeah. uh, like temperature, if it temperature dropped easy, your compressor would be running all the time and your bill wouldn't be, you know, like I think the Edge Star tag on mine says like, oh, this is only going to add $30 a year to your electric bill. Exactly. It, so people, yeah. a lot of people look at that. So yeah, for the most part, I haven't seen one yet that wasn't insulated enough sufficiently to handle a four or five hour outage yeah exactly so i think it's just a big cooler is all it is with it, the, yes with the cooling cool yes I, and i've and, and yes it is just a big cooler and um i think yes billy i'm assuming when that power went out you didn't open the fridge and get your pores out first and then close it and then open it an hour later and get your pour. <laughs> like, like, like that, that might be the sacrifice you have to make because i'm assuming he shares his fridge with all his other stuff so yeah, you that may would make a big difference. Too. You may had to wait five hours before pouring your beer, which is a terrible thing to do when you have no air <laughs> yeah. conditioning in your house and you're dying. But, uh, but yes, Billy, thank you so much for submitting the question. This is a great time to remind you that if we take your question and do it on air, we send you a $25 gift card to catconnection.com at the expense of Mr. Todd Burns. Thank you, boss man for your support of this show. Uh, Moving on to question number two came from our friend Michael P. who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Michael wrote, great podcast, guys. I wish we could have been in Nashville together, but I suppose it is what it is. I'm a longtime Etchstrad brewer and, believe it or not, have never had to use a blow-off tube. I'm writing to ask if you pre-plan a blow-off tube when putting your wort into your bucket or is it in reaction to a blown-off airlock? When would you recommend using a blow-off tube, and what are the basics for using one? Specific length of tubing matter? I've heard the receiving end of the tube should be full of sanitizer, but does it matter how much? Thank you. This is a great question because um, I think both of us have experience with both ways. So I'll start it by saying I've used a blow-off tube once, dude, and it was only in response to an overflow. And it wasn't even me. My pop on that Helleweizen that we brewed. Imperial's yeast which I forget the strain now, darn it, off the top of my head that we used. It was, um, it, it was so invigorate, invigorous. Uh, is that a word? Invigorous. Like the, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I showed y'all a picture vigorous, the next day yeah. that it, vigorous, not invigorous. It was so vigorous that it, it <laughs> was, my dad had to do a blow off tube and, and yeah. I, I told him how to do it real quick, but I was like, well, I didn't think of like for you, do you always just use it no matter what you're brewing or is there a standard? Well, for the most part I do because monocles, Use, they come with too, but I'd use the blow off tube anytime that I do anything that's going to be vigorous, more importantly, vigorous and high alcohol or high gravity. So if you've got a 1060, that's going to really go to town. Uh, another thing, too, is a lot of the Belgian ales, anything that's at room temp will, will have really, I've never done a Quebec and you know, those are at really warm fermentation. So the warmer it is, the more active the yeast is going to be. You want, I would want to use a blow off too, not a airlock. Because the airlock, it'll just get cram packed full of trub and yeast. And you'll have to change those out quite a bit. Another thing I read is there's a good argument to be made with the uh, cell walls of the yeast. They don't like the pressure that's created you know, and there can be added pressure. So if you're wanting to do, if, if you 
concerned about that, a blow off tube re reduces the pressure a lot more than if you have an active, really vigorous fermentation and you're using an airlock. I've had it spitting water out of the airlock and had to change to a blow off tube. And there's really no, there's really no homework to a blow off tube. It's just a piece of barbed fitting with a rubber stopper with a, a hose into a bucket of sanitizer. You want to put sanitizer in because if for some reason the yeast pumps through the tube and goes down into the bucket, at least it's going into something that dies. You know what? We may need to have you, because I, I was telling you before we hit record how all the different subjects we're going to be making videos for Thursday, Friday mm -hmm. this week. Maybe we yep. should have you, or I'd talk to do it too if you don't want to drive up there on Friday. Um, this would be a very quick how-to video that I think a lot of people would appreciate for, yeah. uh, hey, here, you know, I'm going to show you a quick and simple way to make a blow-off tube. Here's why we'd use it, pop, 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 pop. And, and here's yep. how easy it is. Because, yeah, like, when my, my, when my dad did it, I think... You know, I was freaking out at first because like, oh, I've never myself done it. But uh, yeah. the more you look into it, it's actually, I mean, it's as simple it's as can be. Simple. It's super simple. And yeah. you, I mean, I think I shared video with you and Todd. Um, it was motorboating in that little bucket that my dad made with that had the sanitizer in it and the, mm -hmm. the and the tube was actually going into. It was blah, blah, blah. I, I can't imagine if we had left just an airlock in, like what would have happened? Yeah. You know, like <laughs> it would it could have been terrifying for. Uh, yeah. And, and also, you know, a lot of times people don't want the airlock liquid to fall back into the conical. If it's blowing and it's pumping up, another thing too is there is a possibility, especially if you don't have sanitizer in the airlock, that it could get contaminated and, cr and cross contaminate the batch of beer. So it's it's a good idea. And even this, I've done this before. Just go get a piece of three eighths ID hose. That's about the size of the tube inside the airlock. And then you can just pull the lid and the little uh, there's a little part that goes in. There's a two piece. Pull the two piece the lid and the center part out. Put that put a clear hose right on it, and then you want it. You don't want it to kink, but you want to set it to where you have a big radius for the hose, so the hose doesn't kink, and then go into a bucket of sanitizer. Um, I don't, wouldn't do a big full five gallon bucket because that's going to create pressure in the conical too, or whatever you're using. Just a small amount of sanitizer in a little uh, like a quart jar is fine. Keeps the pressure low helps the yeast, and it also, if it does climb through the tube into the sanitizer, how many? It's real simple to do, too. It, exactly. And that's what I was going to reinforce, too. The reason why it's sanitizer, not just like distilled water or, or RO water or just any water, is is mm -hmm. to eliminate the potential for contaminants to to, to suck back sure. in, into yeah. the beer. Because how terrible would that be that you have this vigorous fermentation and it's going to town and you're hitting your numbers, but some bacteria came up because you used tap water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and more importantly nowadays, if let's say you're doing something that's got a pretty high grain bill, that's a lot of money and a lot of love spent on something that can get contaminated. So I never take any chances. One of the worst things that can happen is for me to have an infected batch of beer. It is. It's my fault. Yep. It's nobody else. It's not the ingredients. It's yep. not the yeast. <laughs> it's my fault if it gets infected. So I uh, know. Just it, do your sanitation measures and go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get you a 3 8 barbed, a 90 degree barbed connector and some 3 8 ID hose that'll fit into a uh, bong. And you're, you're good to go. You're good to go. Absolutely. And yeah, Michael, um, I. I would like to say I'm pretty confident we could get that recorded this week because we only have another three videos we're recording that are also just real quick. Todd has been on this kick uh, and, and me too. I'm on the same page. There are so many questions we get in and we answer them on the show. And we direct people here. But how great would it be to have 90 second videos? Just pop, pop, pop. Because sure. we don't monetize 90 percent of our videos anyway on YouTube. Yeah. Like we're legitimately just trying to get some information out there and, and get, you know, I think the long form stuff. We've been monetizing just because uh, Todd's trying to justify my existence in the company or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But like these quick videos of like, here's an, here's how you do a blow off tube and here's why you do it would go a mm -hmm. long way because some people are when they write in, uh, I get sometimes the feeling whether they blatantly say it or not, that they're almost ashamed. Like, oh, this seems like a really stupid question. I don't mind uh, mm -hmm. asking the stupid questions, guys, and, and having <laughs> and, and getting you the answers uh, because in video you can just go find it like. 
How sure. many times have you and I, on any subject, gone to YouTube for the answer and used yeah, it? And I, you, it used it I, while we're doing it. I, those were the questions I was asking when I started home brewing beer. It's, you know, and and thank God YouTube had just started, so there were some resources there. But a lot of times I had to go to the magazines and, and books. My wife. I thinks- even bought a book called Home Brewing for Dummies. You remember the dummy <laughs> line? I got that. I don't know if I bought it or I got it for my birthday, but. It, it helped a lot. And then, you know, the joy of homebrewing, good resource. Good resource. And yeah, my wife thinks I'm handy with like fits in the toilet or whatever, but it's really me in the bathroom and the, the YouTube, <laughs> you YouTube right there. And I'm like, okay. And That's the that modern called? day Encyclopedia Britannica. It really is, dude. What is that thing on Star Trek that they had? Uh, uh, L-A-C-R-S? Yeah, or the Al- Alpha Gra- no, uh, Wolf Graham Alpha, or I forget what it's called, but uh, it. I, now all, all the nerdy people in our audience will be like, oh, Joshua, it was actually cool. <laughs> As they write me my hate mail, my weekly hate mail. No, it's love mail. But anyway, yes, Michael, thank you so much for submitting your question. Uh, Mr. Carlson, we got one more for today's show before we wrap up. It came from our friend Lauren S., who used the submission form as well at homebrewhappyhour.com. Lauren wrote, my boyfriend and I are pretty new to making beer, but your podcast has been a great encouragement to us. So thank you for that. We have been using US05, which is um, a safe ale uh, dry yeast. Uh, yeah, it's the most common popular yeast to use, period. And I think it comes with like every every brewer's best kit that's ever been made since before I was born. <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah, yeah, so we've been using US05 for every batch, but all the talk about Imperial Liquid Yeast has made us want to try theirs for our next batch. Our local shop doesn't carry Imperial yet, and I'm afraid of ordering liquid yeast online because of how hot it is. Do you have any recommendations on other liquid yeast, or do you know how likely our pack of Imperial would be to spoil as it ships from some warehouse to us? That is a great question. Uh, The first thing I'd say is have your local supply shop contact Owen or Casey over at Mm -hmm. Imperial and get them carrying it or even special ordering it. Why aren't they carrying Imperial? That that seems silly to me that you wouldn't offer all the options because there are. We'll get to it in this question. There are, are great alternatives. And I almost, I I wrote her back trying to get more info. She also just submitted this question. And so I haven't heard from Lauren yet. Um, But I I asked like, what, what do you know they carry? Because Omega has some great alternatives. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, um, Y-Yeast and White Labs, they're all great. Uh, Bootleg, well, I think Bootleg, you actually have to get them from, direct from them. But there are a lot of great options. I haven't used Bootleg, but I've used all the others. And and they're great options. They're all great. Uh, We just like the numbers you get with Imperial. So what would you say? Uh, here's what I would uh, I'll lead off. And I'll, I would say this. If you were ordering by chance from KegConnection.com or HomebrewSupply.com, mm-hmm. I would order the extra ice pack for a dollar. Absolutely. Because they'd already come like I know that Todd's retail operations online already sell them with ice packs for like if you order liquid yeast by itself or in a kit, it automatically comes with one ice pack. If you ask 90% of people who don't live in Texas and get their orders a day or two later, they'd say, uh, the yeast was a little warm. So we always tell people it's a disclaimer on the product listing. If it's the summer, get to, it's a dollar. Yes. And, yep. and, and that covers just our cost on the ice pack. It's not covering anything. At, like it's, it, That is not a moneymaker upgrade. I promise you guys no. on that listing. No, and we have to buy a full pallet of those. That's what I mean. Like It's just packs, to try, it's try to definitely. Cover. You know, if you've got if you, most of the shipping day, time, you're looking at three days for most of the orders. An extra ice pack, you're going to be just fine even in the summer. Uh, this is just the one thing that you need to remember is no, get your tracking, follow it, and know when it's going to hit your house because it needs to get put in the fridge as soon as you receive it. Now, I've had stories of people getting their order left on the porch and it's set overnight. Or in the or they get their order and put it in the car and they leave it in the car all day and overnight. Now that's not going to work. You just want to know when it gets there. As soon as it gets there, get it in the fridge and you'll be just yeah, and and brew as soon as you can. And I wouldn't. I, I don't know. And I, I would love to hear feedback from listeners who would tell me because I've never done a starter, so I don't know how simple it might be. But if but say, seeing that Lauren and her boyfriend are are very new to brewing, I, I would still say you know. I know worst case scenario, if the supplier didn't ship you a new one, uh, a, a, like a new pack, or or if you decided not, if it got warm and you thought it was unusable, too warm, you can always try making a starter. 
out of that same pack. And I know a lot of people, specifically in our Patreon, there's been two lately who uh, they didn't get their tracking, unfortunately. And or it went, one of them went to spam. And so it did sit on their porch for an extra day because they just had no idea that they don't have the handy cameras or the ring cameras or whatever. So yeah. it happens. And they did a starter. And thank God, because I guess the cell count in the Imperial pack, it, it came back like nothing. Like it was like, okay, this. Oh, year. yeah, it's double what everybody else. So it was still super viable. The, the activity in their starter was great. And they were able to pour it and have a great batch of beer. Brand new people that may seem daunting, but that's the worst case for me in, in regards to Imperial yeast. So like to answer her specific part of trying Imperial, if by chance, Lauren, you order it from whomever you order it from, com or homebrewsupply.com, uh, if it gets too warm on your porch, you can, you know, email us again and we'll walk you through doing a starter. That was another video Todd wanted to do. That's right. Yeah. I was mind farting. How to do a starter. Um, I, we might have to use a different yeast because Owen might from Imperial might disown us if we show. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that question. <laughs> he doesn't like he doesn't like starters. He's like, just get the right amount of yeast for your <laughs> your batch size, you idiot. Yeah, but Owen, what if you had to use a starter? And then he hung up. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but you know, starters are real simple. If you just need a quart of water, a couple of cups of DME, and uh, you want to boil it so it sanitizes it and thoroughly mixes the dry malt extract into the liquid. And then let it cool down, shake it around a little bit before you pour the yeast. You've got a stir, they've got stir, you can get a stir table on Amazon for next to nothing. But even if you don't, uh, sanitize a piece of foil, wrap it over the top of, you can use a quart mason jar and just swirl it every now and then. You, you can see if the numbers go up. If, if you see any activity, you're good to go. And like we said at the top, and, and, 05 as a dry yeast is a super standard common ale is. yeast. Is there a liquid uh, equivalent from Imperial you'd say would be like, this would work in basically any batch you brew? Like, oh, their house strain is pretty commonly used. It's okay. one of their more popular strains. Just their everyday ale yeast, kind of like the harvest. Harvest about every long time I do, unless it's a uh, coal strain. They had different strains for that. Right. But yeah, house is a really good all purpose. It's kind of like the same equivalent as California Ale White Lab. That's pretty common. I think that's probably one of their most popular yeast strains. And house is for material. Oh. And I'm slipping in my memory because why yeast has well, they're like, their slap packs have a very common one that everyone, like, mm -hmm. I, I know Denny's favorite, is, uh, which is what they call the strain. I forget the number. I could probably yeah. text Lorena right now because she knows it off the top of her head. But like, but every yeah. single one of them, like, I would say, um, if if you're if you're still dead set on not ordering from an, a website, because we do, believe it or not, it's against our best interest, but we believe in supporting local homebrew supply shops. If you can, Absolutely. if you've got a mom and pop brick and mortar, give them support right now because there's a real good chance they're hurting bad. There's a real good chance they're hurting bad, and supply chain disruption and all that that we're feeling, we know they're really feeling it too. So, yeah. um, if you're dead set on supporting your local shop, which we encourage. Uh, ask them for like, uh, you take this question to them in regards to like, Hey, what is a, you don't have Imperial. Okay, fine. Maybe please order it. We're your customer. We want you to, but what is a liquid equivalent from white labs? What is the liquid equivalent from Y yeast? And if they have it in stock, perfect. Try that because we've had great batches with all those brands. I mean, great. Like your California Common, I still think we're using a white lab. Oh, no, pardon me. We switched over to cable car. We did. We were using white lab. Which, they had one. Yes. A strain for that. And then we switched to Imperial. Just the reason, if you remember, when we went to Imperial, we used a fairly new product. And it, here's the fact that it was 100 billion cents in a pack that we are used to having 100 billion cents. Anytime you have a product ready to use right out of the package and you don't have to do a starter, it makes your day go by a lot easier. Brewing process, good things for me. And the results are always there. Like that, Absolutely. that's, that, that's yeah. what got us. And again, not, uh, we, we're, we're very uh, transparent about how much we love Imperial, but that sometimes I feel like I need to go out of my way to remind people we're very spoiled people, guys, as American homebrewers, as any homebrewer that has access to all these great brands like why and why East has been around forever and white labs has been around forever yeah. and these guys are just getting better omega has some great i've heard nothing but good stuff about their hot head they just moved in a bigger facility have they they've been able to absolutely double their production 
It's incredible. It's an incredible time to be alive. It's a weird time right now to be alive. But it's an incredible time to be alive as a home pro. Definitely different. We're so spoiled. We're so stinking spoiled though. Yeah. And like you, I don't think you could have a bad option. We are just we're we love Imperial. Uh, their service is phenomenal. It's it's beyond exceptional, and their product is is just uh, you know it's like how it's I am with it's good. consistently good. And that you know even if that's placebo. I'm convinced that I know what I'm going to get with the end result if I follow all my numbers and then pitch that Imperial uh, pack. Like, it, yeah. it, it makes a huge difference. And when they switch... And also, you know me, I like to repitch yeast. And yep. we we did a test with when we were really brewing Kolsch. I want to say we were brewing Kolsch every week. And I got up to five batches with just... It, get, it kept getting better, and it kept getting fermenting out quicker. And then I think by the fifth time, we just gave up and said, repitch it five times. Think about the money it saves you on a batch of beer. It was incredible. And, yeah, we don't tell yeah. Owen about that experiment. But no, uh, he probably <laughs> but, but I remember because your fifth batch, you thought this is going to be bad because I, I, I think you tasted it like a, a, you know, a few days in or a few days after it stopped and you were still talking and you're like, I think the fifth is going to finally be it. We're done. Yeah. It was the best batch you did. <laughs> yeah. And you know, normally they'll say, you know, you know, mutations, which is totally happening. You know, that the yeast mutates and it gets worse. And, but you've got, you've got, look at Budweiser. I hate to bring them up, but they have used the same strain of yeast since they've been a, a beer company. So, but they have a lab. They're able to pull the good, the viable yeast, propagate those. But oh, that's amazing. And you can, I did see something the other day, and, and people can comment on this video. But I saw a video the other day. Uh, a individual had a talking about dry yeast, and that you shouldn't repitch dry yeast. Now I have done that and never noticed a difference. Maybe somebody can answer that question. Why? wonder why some people feel like dry yeast you can't repitch and i have done that and had good results so that's we, something for the comments section. we should have oh what is his name oh i hope he doesn't watch the show because i'm not going to edit this out the guy who always goes to the trade shows for lalamand um and i'm mispronouncing their company that because i always mispronounce the name of it but yeah the dry i mean there and i still don't know if they put out that coal strain that we've been talking about for like a year yeah. but uh they're the dry yeast people we should have them on and, and, and maybe and, and talk about yeah, yeah talk about repitch hey some people have really stressed to us that you can't repitch dry why yeah but, i mean i saw that the other day and i thought well i've never heard that before but he was pretty adamant he i want to say he was a homebrew supply shop owner and he was he was very serious about it I thought that was a one on me you know, some some people in the industry we we act more confident than we actually are with our answers, James. I, <laughs> or maybe he had a lot of dry yeast he needed to get yeah, rid that's of. What and... <laughs> I'll just say we're clever, no, no. <laughs> we're a clever bunch in marketing, my friend. We are a clever bunch. I uh, Todd always reminds me when people ask questions and I don't have the confidence. He's like, dude, you've been in the industry for twelve years. Just give it your answer. That's all anyone else is doing is just giving it their answer. And worst case, it's wrong or not applicable. And I'm like, but I don't want it to be wrong. Um, you know, but you see, you're an entire you're entitled to your opinion, and so yeah. that's what we're basically giving is our opinion that's on it. our experience with homebrewing. We've always said that, you know, this may not be your whatever we suggest may not yep. be something that works for you, but it's worked for me and it's yep. worked for you, and that's why we bring it up. Exactly. Yeah, and that and that, that describes our show. That was yeah. <laughs> that, was like, that was the gist of homebrew happy. Yeah, homebrewers talking to homebrewers is all yes. it is. But Lauren, yes, to wrap up your question, I would say. Um, well, first off, and I'm not joking when I say this, ask if you can special order Imperial because I would wholeheartedly recommend doing that. And yeah. especially if you want to support your shop, which I can't stress enough, we do encourage, um, get them to order it because I think, I think when people use Imperial, they become believers. And, uh, yeah. if, if you're, if they're worried about getting rid of the, the stock, I, I don't think they will have any issues getting rid of premium liquid yeast. It is pricier, obviously, than some other brands, and it's pricier than dry yeast, but uh, the results are always there, so I, I wholeheartedly stand behind that. And wor in worst case, if you end up ordering, especially if you order from us, email. Email Carlson at cmbecker.com. Email T Burns mm -hmm. at Tech Connection, and, and uh, they, they can help you through the process, but just order an extra pack wherever you order it from if you're doing it online. Um, at least get two ice packs. If they, if the company you're ordering from doesn't already give you one with your liquid yeast, make sure you get two for the, for yeah. this summertime. I wish Lauren would have told me where she lives. 
because uh, that sounded creepy. I mean, I wish, <laughs> I wish, I wish Lauren, I wish I knew what state it was shipping to Lauren because then I could say if she's going to Northern California, you definitely need to. If it's going to uh, yeah. San Angelo, Texas, one might actually be okay. Because, well, this time of year, oh, good point. You, you just get two. two. You know, You're right. Just get. It was 110. I don't know if you remember last week, but. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday was over 110 here. Yeah. So and and what I will say though, what I love about Joe, because Joe and his crew always does the recipes, they don't let them just sit in the warehouse all day uh, in the bots and then get picked up in the afternoon. They do the recipes, they time it just right so that it is yeah. as cold as possible leaving here to give it the best chance possible because we know how hot those FedEx trucks are in the back, and we know how hot it, it how easy it is for temperature to drop. He can wrap it in bubble wrap and the ice pack all day. But if it's two ice packs on either side, like you said, then it's golden. That one yeah. ice pack starts warming up real quick because the other side is not covered with ice and it's it can be a mess. But again, I say a mess. I've yet to have it, it, surprisingly every summer we don't get a lot of people calling saying I only got oh it's not it's not working. I pitched the yeast and it didn't work. That happens very rarely. Knock on wood. Yeah, we would hear if that was the case. We yes. would definitely hear. Exactly. So Lauren. Hope that uh, we were able to help. And if we weren't, uh, you can email all of your uh, reply, feedback, or hate mail to tburns at kegconnection.com. <laughs> so with that being said, Mr. Carlson, that's it for the show, my friend. I appreciate your time. I know it's been crazy hectic, and I know that uh, with Todd out of town, you wear every hat that can possibly be worn at <laughs> there at headquarters. But... I say you wear a hat. You don't wear a hat. You have a beautiful head of hair. And I love the shirt. I didn't even comment. Gosh, I love how those shirts turned out. They turned out so good. I'm like you. I'm looking forward to getting together with you next week at Port A and having a beer. And we will. And we'll have to take pictures for for the Homebrew Happy Hour Instagram so that I can can prove to people that we hung out. Because like (laughs) people think you ignore me out of here. They're like, how could he possibly want to be around that guy? I'm like, no, he's my friend. He's my friend. (laughs) But anyways, thank you so much, sir, for your time. I appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325 305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, homebrewsupply.com, for supporting us and the homebrewing community. Save 5% off your order when you visit homebrewsupply.com and use our promo code HHH. You can also get even better discounts when you join our Patreon by visiting patreon.com forward slash homebrewhappyhour. On behalf of the absent Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening.